You know it's quite rare that we see a change like this. Fedora, a popular Linux distribution, has promoted their KDE Plasma desktop environment spin to an equal level than their default GNOME based one. Given that Fedora also kind of serves as a testing ground for the paid corporate distro Red Hat Enterprise and many changes eventually get migrated to it, this is a very interesting development. But is KDE Plasma even ready for this change? Why was GNOME always the go-to for many distributions and what does this mean for you? In today's video, we're going to take a look at some things that differentiate KDE Plasma from GNOME in a more corporate controlled environment, some limitations that I experienced personally, and if I think that KDE Plasma is capable of becoming the gold standard when it comes to Linux desktop environments. Let's get straight into it. So if you've already watched some of my older videos, then you might know that I'm mostly a GNOME user. But why? Even though I already tried out KDE Plasma a couple of times and even argued that I loved many features about it, why do I keep coming back? Well honestly, there are a couple of things where GNOME is just better. Let's start off with account integrations. For me it's very important that I keep my calendars in sync. Not only my own, but also shared ones with friends or family. With GNOME's online account functionality, I can for example simply connect my Google account and access most of its features without much effort. On KDE Plasma, however, that's a bit more difficult. For starters, there is no native or system-integrated way how you can sync your calendars or files, and everything is done on the application level. While this works generally well and is easy to set up for some applications, for other use cases it's much more of a hassle. For example, if you want to integrate your cloud storage into the file manager like you can on GNOME, then you are going to need to rely on third-party tools, since Plasma's own integration is not really great. Like I experienced a couple of issues from Plasma always asking for some keyring password, which wouldn't unlock automatically, to the drive not reconnecting or crashing the application, and one thing that applies to not only online accounts but regular file trees as well is that they don't work for every program. As an example, on GNOME I can add a NAS or file server by simply telling it the protocol, usually SMB, the server address and the file share. It then asks me for my credentials and I can access my files. While the process for KDE Plasma looks and feels the same, there is a major difference. GVFS, the program that handles connecting to file shares and cloud storage on GNOME in the background, mounts the share in a browsable path, which you can look up. Why is that important? Well, because it allows you to access files like they are stored locally. And this is incredibly important for applications that have their own file chooser. On KDE Plasma, if I mount my file server with Dolphin, the KDE Plasma file manager, I cannot access it in applications like GIMP or DaVinci Resolve. But hold on, that shouldn't be a problem for Fedora 42, since they already include an optional dependency, even on their current spin, which fixes that issue. Yeah, no. See, the problem with KIO Fuse is that while it behaves similar to GNOME's GVFS, it mounts shares in a different directory every time you access it. This means that static entries won't work, which is quite a problem, and the fastest way to get around this issue is to just mount the share on a kernel level. For corporate use, this is not really ideal, since if for some reason the share disconnects, then remounting it is not really a straightforward process for most. It also means that you need to build a custom solution to access the share without exposing their credentials in a file, which could potentially be read in case of a cyber attack. So basically, easily connecting file shares and online accounts is much harder to do in KD Plasma than it is on GNOME. The second point is of course the streamlined experience. I personally consider GNOME to be one of the best desktop environments when it comes to ease of use. While Plasma offers new users a familiar layout, which they might already be comfortable with, as soon as they need to find some settings, it gets a bit more difficult. The out-of-the-box customization options of KDE Plasma are its greatest strength, but also its greatest weakness. If KDE Plasma was the only desktop environment available, then I would advise most sysadmins to lock down the customization options to the bare minimum to avoid breakages in the long run. And I don't think that this is something that you should, or in some cases even can do that easily. And third, actually, is there a third? Well, and you thought this was going to be a KD Plasma rant. Alright, let's quickly summarize. Mounting file shares and connecting to online accounts is more challenging on KD Plasma, because you can't really use a graphical way. Is it hard though? Well, for some, but I think it's acceptable. 
This dreamland experience is something that is subjective. Like if you don't customize plasma much and use it like it comes out of the box, then it isn't bad. And the KDE team is putting a lot of effort into improving the situation, which was way worse even just a year ago. One advantage that GNOME has over KD Plasma is its out-of-the-box corporate functionalities, like being able to utilize Kerberos authentication or joining your device to an Active Directory infrastructure. But that doesn't really apply to Fedora all that much. As for the rest, KD Plasma has the overall greater feature set. You get many gaming-related features and HDR support much quicker. You can modify the compositor to change some of its more advanced features, theme the whole desktop environment without any third-party extensions, globally customize hotkeys and basically change anything else you can dream of. The main difference between choosing GNOME or KDE Plasma is if you want an integrated experience or a modular one. One reason on why I like GNOME so much is that everything is streamlined, feels smooth, polished and that applications like online accounts, the screenshot tool and similar applications are integrated really well. On the other hand, I also like KDE Plasma because I have more options and can fully replace one application with another. Promoting KDE Plasma to the same level that GNOME currently has for Fedora means that users can now more easily make the choice. Just a year back, I had some doubts that KD Plasma is already suited for most users in contrast to something like GNOME, but it has improved a lot since then. While I personally think that GNOME still holds the edge, simply because of its integrations and streamlined experience, if you don't care about all that, then KD Plasma is the better option for you. It's not ready to just replace GNOME from one day to the other, and this is the main reason on why I keep coming back. But honestly speaking, I think that KDE Plasma is up there and that Fedora is making the right decision here. Of course, it still lacks some polishing here and there, especially when it comes to presentation and the consistent smoothness of the desktop, but I keep getting amazed on how good it can get once you adjust it to your liking. Like I already said in some of my previous videos, GNOME basically nailed the experience for me personally, and I can get KD Plasma to like 95% to what I want it to be. But it's these few last percent that still keep me on GNOME. Otherwise I would say that KD Plasma is now superior, and that's where I leave it. Actually no, that's not where I leave it, because who says that there are only two options? Do you use GNOME, KD Plasma or even a whole different desktop environment? Which one is superior in your opinion? And do you think that Fedora could have replaced GNOME altogether? Please let us know in the comments. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then definitely make sure to check out our membership program, as well as our online shop, where we are dedicated to support various open source projects with every made sale. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel, so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.